And I would like to thank the organizing committee and uh, Vladimir Semiglazo for the kind invitation. My topic is today surgical treatment evolution in the era of breast cancer system treatment. If, if we look at the breast cancer surgery, we will see the major change coming from radical mastectomy to modified radical mastectomy, breast conservative surgery, and no axillary dissection for patients with negative central lymph node. And uh, ACOSOC Z11 trial, if you found one or two positive lymph nodes, there will be no axillary dissection. And 2016 targeted axillary dissection after neurogevant systemic therapy came into consideration. And uh, there is a discussion, interrogation about the place of surgery in breast cancer management treatment after neurogevant systemic therapy if patients have pathologic complete response diagnosed by biopsy or after surgery. And we see the impact of systemic therapy on breast cancer surgery. The first edomycin-based prospective clinical trials show that NST had a similar survival rate with adjuvant systemic therapy and pathologic complete response rate was 13.7% and almost 25% of patients requiring mastectomy at breast conserving surgery in addition to neoadjuvant systemic therapy. AC plus texane in 2000 based neoadjuvant systemic therapy increased pathologic complete response rate to 26% in 2000 and breast conserving surgery rate to 42%. In addition to trastuzumab and pertuzumab in her to positive patients, additionally, AC plus Texan increased pathologic complete response rate to almost 70% rate with trastuzumab and pertuzumab in 2005. And the targeted axillary dissection came into, the, into consideration in 2016 after neoadjuvant systemic therapy, the patients had clinically not negative axilla. And the last discussion was about the surgery. There has been many trials interrogating the place of surgery in patients with pathology complete response diagnosed by biopsy after neoadjuvant systemic therapy. We know that neoadjuvant systemic therapy, NST, increases breast conserving surgery rate and convert inoperable tumors to operable one. And it also improves cosmetic outcomes, identifies patients at lower or higher local regional risk based on pathologic response. It also reduces extent of axillary surgery by downstaging involved axillary nodes. And NST has a potential to eliminate local regional therapy with the use of more active regimens and or with appropriate patient selection with tumor biomarkers. Accurate detection of residual tumor is necessary to inform surgical planning. All radiologic tests should be repeated after NST for evaluation of response and tumor chance change due to neoadjuvant systemic therapy cause difficulty in assessing tumor burden with ultrasound and mammography. And MRI is more accurate tool to assess residual tumor burden in this setting and its accuracy to determine breast PCR was 83% in uh, meta-analysis. Indication to breast conserving surgery after neoadjuvant systemic therapy are similar to 
early breast cancer patients' indications. These are the ability to obtain surgical negative margins, should have satisfactory cosmetic result, and the ability to remove all suspicious microcalcifications from the breast and patient's reference. Negative surgical margin for lumpectomy after neoadjuvant therapy is very controversial. There are many concerns about secretorial bookshot pattern, as you see in this picture, is tumor response to chemotherapy in a scattered bookshot pattern, cell that after neoadjuvant systemic therapy, this response pattern could result in residual tumor burden with a minimal negative margin weight. The NSABP, B18, and B27 trials used a margin definition of knowing on tumor similar to early breast cancer and reported high docoregional recurrence rates. But MD Anderson studies haven't found negative margin width to be significantly associated with local relapse free survival after neoadjuvant systemic therapy. NACBB18 and EORTC trials comparing pre op four cycles of AC reported that almost 25% of patients require mastectomy at presentation were eligible for breast conservation surgery. In a more recent cancer and leukemia group B trials, of neoadjuvant systemic therapy in triple negative and HER2 positive patients, 42-43% of patients initially thought to require mastectomy were candidate for breast conserving surgery. If we look at the combined analysis of NSABPB18 and B27 trials, in NSABPB18 trial, Upper apple breast cancer patients were randomized in two groups. The first group was surgery and for AC. The second one, neoadjuvant for AC and surgery. And NSABPB27 trial performed in upper apple breast cancer patients and the patients randomized into two groups. The first one, AC for AC surgery. The second group for AC for docetaxel and surgery. And third group was for AC surgery and for docetaxel. 356 56 local regional recurrences as first events were found in this combined analysis. In this combined analysis, operable breast cancer rate was very high. Almost 70% of patients had clinical N0, and 70% of patients had clinical T12, and less than 10% of patients had stage 3 breast cancer. And 10 year cumulative incidence of local regional recurrence was. 14.3 and 12.2% in these two trials, respectively. And there was a significant reduction in the 10-year cumulative incidence of local regional recurrence with the addition of docetaxel. This rate was 8.5% and statistically significant. If we look at the multivariate analysis of these trials, age less than 50 years old, clinical trial size, tumor size more than five centimeter, clinical nodal status positivity, and nodal breast pathologic status positivity were independent predictors of 10 year local regional recurrence.
We know from the trials that etiology complete response rate has, was a difference in different molecular subtypes of the neoadjuvant systemic therapy. This rate was lowest in patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, around 7 to 16 percent. It's reached to 30 percent in luminal B or to positive breast cancer, additional trastuzumab. It's also reached to 50, sometimes 65 percent, addition of trastuzumab and pertuzumab. PCR rate was more than 30% in patients with triple negative breast cancer. And pathology complete response and breast conserving surgery. There was no parallel relationship between PCR rates and breast conserving surgery rates. This was also noted in a meta-analysis in which the addition of taxane to adriamycin cyclophosphamide doubled PCR rate, but breast conserving surgery rates were similar in the ACN taxane arm. But many women enrolled in trials were already eligible for breast cancer. As I saw in previous slides, less than 10% of patients had stage 3 breast cancer in previous trials. So differences in PCR rate didn't change the breast conserving surgery rate. And we know that residual suspicious microclassification in the breast are a particular problem, limiting the use of breast conserving surgery after neoadjuvant therapy because they rarely resolve after NCT, NST, even when there is no viable residual tumor. And excision of whole microclassifications after neoadjuvant systemic therapy is absolutely necessary to obtain negative surgical margin, even when it requires mastectomy. And there are many concerns regarding the safety of breast conserving surgery after neoadjuvant therapy. In a meta-analysis included 10 randomized clinical trials of neoadjuvant systemic therapy versus adjuvant systemic therapy. Although no survival differences were observed, 5.5% increase in local regional recurrence was seen in the neoadjuvant systemic therapy group. This increase possibly related with uh, difficulty in obtaining negative surgical margin in this patient's group. How about the future pers perspective from... Yes, what are the future perspectives from a breast surgeon like me? I have Indian breast cancer surgery for 30, 34 years. We saw from, from the trials high PCR rates in patients with HER2 positive and triple negative breast cancer treated with Najwan systemic therapy have stimulated interest in avoidance omitting of surgery in patients if the presence of pathology complete response rate can be determined with imaging and biopsy. 
In my country, in probably in Russia, in United States, surgery at low cost, lower cost than systemic chemotherapy, including side effect, effective modality to determine the presence of PCR and to maintain local control in patients who have a good response to neoadjuvant systemic therapy. Efforts to eliminate surgery at this time, at this time seem premature. The management of patients without surgery will involve more imaging surveillance, several surveillance trials, and biopsies, and its long-term and long-term acceptability and cost effectiveness of these approaches unknown, uncertain. In the future, probably a couple of decades later, when imaging may more reliably allow the differentiation between viable residual tumor and post-treatment and post-treatment change, and when systemic therapy has further improved, this will be an era worthy of study. The other problem, other important topic is the impact of systemic therapy on axillary surgery. Management of clinically not negative axilla. In this patient, central lymph node biopsy is not recommended before NST. NST decreases the need for axillary lymph node dissection. And central lymph node biopsy can be identified in more than 90% of these patients and false negative rates change from 7 to 12 percent. Local regional recurrence rates are also low, about 2 percent in the axilla. And we accept that central lymph node biopsy is a standard practice in these patients with clinically not axilla after neoadjuvant systemic therapy. How about the management of axilla clinically not positive? In, in, increasing use of neoadjuvant systemic therapy has led to increasing complete clinical response, radiologically, clinically, in patients with upfront not positive breast cancer, a particular debate, controversial, is whether all patients who have not positive disease before neoadjuvant therapy should receive axillary dissection if they have a complete clinical response. But to stage the axilla in patients with clinical and positive disease who undergo neoadjuvant therapy has been challenging due to high false negative rates and low identification rate. If you look at the pathologic complete response after neoadjuvant systemic therapy across four molecular breast cancer subtypes, 
we will see that lymph node conversion rate from positive to negative is low again in luminal A breast cancer patients around 15%. It is 36 to 40 percent in patients with luminal B HER2 positive breast cancer. It changed from 46 to 65 percent in patients with HER2 positive luminal subtype. It's around 30, 45 to 50 percent in patients with triple negative breast cancer. In patients with residual disease, after neoadjuvant systemic therapy, capacitabine for patients with HER2 negative breast cancer, great X trial, EDM1 for patients for patients with HER2 positive disease, Caterin trial substantially have increased disease-free survival in patients with residual tumor after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And false negative rate of central lymph node biopsy is higher after neoadjuvant systemic therapy, but by using dual tracer, retrieving three or more Sentinel leaf nodes and clinical axilla before neoadjuvant systemic therapy have reduced false negative rate. False negative rates was 12.6% in ACOSOX Z71 trial, ACOSOX Z71 trial. It's 8.4% in sentinel node following neoadjuvant chemotherapy trial. It's 14.2% in sentinel trial. And it's 13.7% in our trial. In our trial, 76 breast cancer patients with biopsy proven etologic lymph node received neoadjuvant systemic therapy were included in this study. Dual tracer for central lymph node biopsy was used and axillary dissection were performed after central lymph node biopsy. Identification rate was 92%. Post negative rate was 13.7%. And in our trials, post negative rate was associated with multifocal multicentric tumor, lymphovascular invasion, and the number of involved lymph nodes. And conservative surgeons believe that axillary clearance should remain the standard of care for patients with not positive breast cancer because, because they do believe that central lymph node biopsy is not highly accurate to account tumor burden and tumor biology. It hasn't established long-term oncologic safety. And central lymph node biopsy does compromise decision about receiving ages additional adjuvant therapy that could affect survival. And there is there is no legal evidence to support omission of routine axillary lymph node dissection in these patients.
Я прошу прощения, но прошу переводчика перевести. У нас регламент, который закончился. Два... I must apologize. Uh, you are just, uh, uh, you are just your final slide, please, because you are out of time already. I have to wait for translation. I am sorry. I also heard Russian language and try to. This is the reason uh, I waited the translator because uh, I don't want to speak too too speedy. So waited for translation. This is the reason I passed my time. I am sorry. I have a couple of slides. Sorry about that. There are many attempts to reduce false negative rate after neojoan therapy. Additional evaluation of sensor lift load with immunohistochemistry. Placement of a clip in positive lymph node and marking positive lymph node with radioactive seeds. And our studies show that with this technique, clip node targeted axillary dissection decreased the false negative rate 4.2% published in surgical and also of surgical oncology 2018. And this reduction in the false negative rate is encouraging, but this data must be interpreted with caution. First, these experiences with lower false negative rate based on small cohorts and small sample size limit the ability to draw accurate conclusion. Second one, the disease burden and subtype may play a role in the accuracy of targeted dissection. And we need multi-center prospective studies with large series to accept a curation of targeted axillary dissection. Thank you very much for your attention.